Okay, it's been a while since we've been working on the Yaris, but we are finally back at it, and today is the start of a very big project. If you read the title, you know what's coming up. We're putting a limited slip differential in this little front wheel drive hatchback. I've been using this car to compete on track for the last two years, but the open diff is really starting to become a problem. So we're gonna pull the transmission, install a limited slip differential from Cusco. We're also gonna install a 4.3 final drive, which is gonna give this thing better acceleration than the 3.7 that's currently in there. And while the subframe and transmission are dropped, we're gonna see what else we can address and upgrade to make this car faster than it's ever been before. We've got a couple days before the LSD actually arrives, so I'm gonna start by taking apart the front end of this car. Since this is a front wheel drive car, the limited slip differential goes inside the transmission. So we gotta drop the subframe and pull the transmission out. There's a lot of steps to this, but I've removed this transmission before, and if I get stuck, I can just look back at that video. This video will not be a tutorial. Okay, turns out past me isn't very helpful. Okay, radiator and fan are out, slave cylinder is off, starter is off, and the intake is off. Um, normally, to do this, you'd have to uh, remove the battery as well. My battery's been relocated to the back for a while. The shifter cables are also disconnected. Before I go any further, I'm gonna rearrange the jacks because I've got the bigger jacks in the back because I was working on exhaust stuff. And I think I need the front wheels on anyway to disconnect the um, axle nut because we need to drop the entire subframe. So I guess wheels are going back on and this is going on the ground. So I got the car back on the ground and then started to work on the axle nuts. It's winter, and up here in the mountains, these things are gonna require a lot of heat to get loose. There we go. Okay, so the axles are loose. Uh, we can work on starting to drop the entire subframe. Um, so we'll get that started. When you're taking off this many fasteners, I like to put them back where they came from so that every nut and every bolt goes back in the right place. To drop the subframe, we need to disconnect everything. That includes the sway bar end link and the tie rod end. Also, the axle nut still needs to come all the way off. And finally, we have the ball joint on our lower control arm. Apart from that, there are several large bolts holding the subframe to the car, and we just need to disconnect those one by one. Okay, let's call it there for today. I'm gonna need a ball joint separator for the next bit, and uh, it's cold and I'm tired. Um, <sighs> working at elevation is tough. While mechanic Joey gets some sleep, voiceover Joey is gonna tell you all about how a limited slip differential actually works. With an open differential, the two wheels are driven completely independently. This means that if I lean enough in one corner to get weight off of the inside tire, the power wants to go to that side and no power is getting to the outside wheel. With an LSD, however, the tires want to spin together. Even if one is low on grip, the other one will still get power. That way, no matter what the conditions are, I can still put power to the ground. In a clutch style LSD like the one we're getting, the axles are spider geared into a cross shaft and the crosses sit in two valleys in the housing. As the spider gears turn, the cross shaft wants to climb the walls of those valleys and essentially pushes the housing outwards. As it pushes outwards, friction discs lock up the differential. There are a bunch of different types of LSDs and different ways that they lock up in acceleration and deceleration, but I'll tell you more about that in a second. Right now, I'm gonna head over to Cusco to pick up our LSD. Uh, 
So this is it, my brand new Cusco LSD. And this is Kenji from Cusco. He's going to show me how to set this up because this thing is fully customizable. For instance, it can be set to either a one-way LSD or a 1.5 way. This cross shank is sitting one way. Lift it, mm -hmm. flip 180 degree. Then you will need to sit in the one five. So let me explain what that actually means. A one-way LSD would give you lockup on acceleration, but no lockup on deceleration. A 1.5-way LSD gives you half as much lockup on deceleration as it would on acceleration. In the one-way setting, the cross shaft can climb the valley this way, but it can't go back the other way. In the 1.5-way setting, it can climb the valley either way, but it's definitely harder to go the deceleration way than it is the acceleration way. The amount of lockup is also customizable as well. There are 12 springs in this setup, but we can remove springs to get less lockup if we want to. We can also change the order of the friction plates to get less friction. Right now, we are setting this up as a 1.5 way with maximum lockup because even though the Yaris isn't a crazy, crazy build, this is a very small differential. But even though I've learned a lot about this, I'm not entirely sure what the result is going to be. My thought is with a 1.5 on a rear wheel drive car, it will break in slightly more of a straight line, right? You're, it's n If you had a tail-happy car mm -hmm. and you put a uh, 1.5 LSD in there, it would break in more of a straight line. Yeah. Is that the case with front wheel drive? <laughs> One of the things that Kenji did show me, though, is that the amount of lockup can be tested on this before you even put the LSD in. Cusco has a specific range that each LSD should be capable of, and if you want to check that, all you need to do is put these special spline tools in and use a torque wrench to see how much resistance you're getting. The idea is that if after a couple thousand miles it's giving you less resistance, then it might be time for a rebuild. And these things are fully rebuildable, so I'm not going to need another LSD for this car ever again. Kenji was super helpful. I sat and talked with him for about an hour when I picked this LSD up. And if you want to see an extended cut of the conversation I had with him, I'll post that later on. But for now, we still have a transmission that we need to get out of the Yaris. Okay, it's a new day. We're going to drop the subframe. I got a ball joint separator for those lower control arm ball joints. And then hopefully we're going to get the transmission out today. I'm draining the transmission fluid so that it's lighter and we also don't make a mess when we remove the axles. So there's a couple ways you can drop the subframe. Either you can um, leave the steering rack connected to the subframe, which means you've got to disconnect the steering column or you can leave the steering column connected to the car, which means you gotta unbolt the steering rack from the subframe. Six and one, half a dozen of the other. I wanna replace some things on the steering rack, so I'm gonna bring the steering rack down with everything. Once I got everything unbolted though, it was evident that I was running into a problem. The steering rack just didn't want to let go. So I decided to unbolt the steering rack with these two nuts. Once those were undone, the subframe came away with no problem, but the steering rack was kind of just hanging there, so I wanted to figure out a way to get that off. And then, eventually, I remembered exactly how to do it. So I think I remember what the deal is. Uh, the top of this steering rack is indexed, so that nut doesn't have to loosen, it has to come out all the way. Just, you think I would have remembered that?
So if you're taking apart your car, especially over a couple days, I highly recommend making one of these so you can keep track of all the bolts. And uh, this helps so that you don't have to memorize it all. With the steering rack and subframe out, all that's left is to unbolt the transmission. Make sure that all the motor mounts are loosened and any cables are removed. Then it's just about getting the three bolts at the bottom and a couple bolts at the top and one on the back here to disconnect it from the engine itself. With a little wiggling, we got the transmission out. It's kind of nice to see this car come full circle. Putting this transmission in was the first video that I made for this channel. And now to make the car faster, we're having to pull it out yet again. Okay, um, so the transmission, the transmission is officially out. Um, we've still got a lot of work to do because we've got to actually install the LSD. Um, I'm gonna need some help for that. So I'm gonna save that for another video. But uh, whew, lots of progress made. And uh, next time we'll check in and see, uh, see how an LSD is installed. We've also got some other stuff going into the transmission. You'll see that next episode. And while that's all getting done, there's a, there's a couple other things that could be going in the car as well while the subframe is down. So lots of stuff planned. Uh, Let's see if we can get it all done.